The appearance of Butch Patrick on Christina's Court was provided by Genesis Creations Entertainment, www.genesiscreations.biz. Enter Christina's Court. Witness a judge who's direct and fair. A judge with a deep passion for the law and ordinary people. Judge Christina Perez. She takes the law into her own heart. 45-year-old webmaster Mickey Keats says TV's Eddie Munster, real name Butch Patrick, cut him out of a Munster book deal. He's suing for $5,000. 53-year-old television icon Eddie Munster, a.k.a. Butch Patrick, is countersuing for $5,000 for revenues lost when Mickey took over Butch's website. Butch says Mickey is jealous of Butch's girlfriend who authored his new book. All parties have been sworn in, Your Honor. Thank you, Bernard. Eddie Munster. It's great to, I know you're not Eddie Munster, but you're Butch Patrick, but it's great to have you here. Thank you, Your Honor. Nice. It's been a while since I've seen you on TV. 45 years from the, from the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not that you're that old. No, I'm not. But you, look, you look the same. Thank you. Except for the... Yes, my receding hairline is now normal. <laughs> so I think we have a clip of the uh, good old days. You thought that you were responsible for Eddie leaving home. But you weren't, Boris. It was all my own fault. I was acting like a real dope. Please don't run away. You won't, will you? <laughs> you know something? You're the greatest playmate a guy could ever have. Oh, see? He thinks you are one, too. <laughs> Good memories, no? Good memories. But I know this is why we're not here at Christina's Court today. That's not the reason why to celebrate this great show. Mr. Keats, you are suing Mr. Patrick, correct? Yes, ma'am. Tell me why. I'm suing him for uh, fees owed for hosting the Munsters webpage and managing uh, emails and all things that go with uh, a website and a uh, functioning website. Hmm. Okay, so tell me about it. How did you meet uh, Mr. Patrick? Uh, we met through a mutual friend about eight years ago, uh, perhaps, and um, we became friends, and uh, uh, occasionally I would accompany him you on... You were friends? Uh, yes. He stayed at my house. I stayed at his house. We were very so good friends. So you're buddies. Okay. And um, I understand that you registered Munsters.com a long time ago. Yeah, I believe it's probably been about 12 years. I'm 12 not years. exact on it, but it was early 90s. Early 90s. And w was it an active website? Yes, it was. It was. And mm -hmm. how did you come to the point, Mr. Keats, to take over the website? With Butch's blessing and full permission, um, there came a point where I moved his website, which basically consists of files, of course, from servers that someone else own to my servers. What was wrong with the website he had? Yeah, see, I'm not very computer savvy at all. It was one of the problems. I was very <laughs> ignorant to, this, to the internet. And uh, when I met Mickey, um, he specializes in traffic, you know, how to get people to come to your website. The website is, in itself existed, and um, he, you know, and he convinced me that there were some good things that could be done with the website, and that's why I, why I switched. Uh, and you trusted him, of and course. I, and I trusted and, him, yes. And did you have access to, no. the, to the website? So if you wanted to go on and see who wrote you an email? That was, that was one of my big issues, is Mickey and I always had communication problems. But um, the main issue, as far as the, you know, what I think is, is the fact that when this book came out three days ago, I wanted to um, so. use the publishers. I wanted to move my website. And I, Mickey and I had spoken. And I said, you know, we're not getting along. It's not going anywhere. I want my website back. So for almost 2003 to 2007, you maintained this website, the emails. You did everything for this website? Absolutely. For, for free. free. That's correct. We had an agreement that he would get traffic, he would get his website, would get a lot of activity from the Munster's website. We never had a cash situation. And so I, that and was I, your understanding yes, of the agreement? That is correct. And your understanding of the agreement was completely different? Absolutely. Okay. Did you benefit by any chance? How did, you, how did your company benefit? Well, actually, I didn't benefit from the traffic from the Munster's webpage. Mm -hmm. Did uh, you benefit did... by referrals? Did you refer him anybody? Uh, my sister, David Hasselhoff. In Christina's court, TV's Eddie Munster fighting for his Munster's website hijacked by a friend. The issue here is, honestly, it's we couldn't get along. We didn't see eye to eye. Why couldn't you get along? When did the problems start happening? I mean, you guys were friends for a long time. We had issues, business issues. We were always friend friendly outside of business. We were always getting along great. That was what not What were an the issue. issues you were having with Mickey? He was very um, 
protective of letting anybody into the website and letting anything else uh, control outside of his hands. My argument was a lot of the emails, because the Munsters and my personal appearance, you know, I can, I can go to personal appearances in a lot of various venues, from car shows to comic book shows to toy shows. I would have liked to have seen this email and made the decision myself on what might be lead to something as opposed to leaving it up to him who's not in the entertainment industry at, at least not at the level that so I So how many I times uh, Butch did you ask him hey Mickey I need to see these emails let me read them <laughs> numerous times he always had access to his own emails in fact to the emails that you were reading from the people absolutely in did fact you? he had his own email address and a, a web interface the problem was for a long time he didn't have a computer he eventually got a laptop I set that laptop up and I, I, would, where, I would I would where did I, that laptop wind up by the way I'm not sure. It gave, I gave it to you for payment. Regardless of Well, that. I'm just saying my laptop wound up with you. When Butch got the laptop, probably two years into when I had his website, one of the reasons why he got the laptop was for him to be able to read his email online. And the I emails that he himself got? Yeah. Or all well, the emails? All of the emails. Because like, he's complaining that he never saw those emails, for example, that you were managing and that request for special well, appearances? that's just absolutely not true. Did um, he see all of those emails? Did he have well, a right to see all of those emails? Absolutely had a right to. Did you to, ever see all no. of those emails? How many no. times did you ask to see those emails? Right. It's, it's a lot. He said most of it was spam. He would deflect and say, you know, most of this is spam. Once in a while something would come through. And he actually, there was another issue of an investment that we had together that we both split uh -huh. that, that earned him $5,000. Um, it was I, I, but I'm just, I, no, but excuse me for a second. I also have a letter from my publisher, which is basically he, this is all about basically wanting to go with a different ISP, someone I could deal with. We just weren't getting along, mm -hmm. bottom line. I mean, really, that's all, it was, that's the issue. We just weren't getting Why along Why do you think you weren't getting along after a while? It, well, he's tough to communicate with. We call him the ambassador of controversy, and he knows that wherever he goes, he creates a little, like a, a Tasmanian devil. He just goes around, and he knows. Are you the ambassador of controversy? Uh, are you called the ambassador of controversy? Evidently. Well, there you go. Well, are you surprised that you had problems? That you were hard to communicate? I'm not surprised at anything Butch would say. Why are you saying that? Um, because he says lots of things. Like? And he has advisors that evidently communicate with the great beyond, so you never really know what's going to come out from... What do you mean they communicate with the great well, beyond? Well, I mean, he's a, speaking of, a clear he, he, mentioned up, he mentioned one of his, uh, I don't know... Well, Bonnie, what she's a paranormal it. expert in San Diego. You know, she does that. That's how I met her. I have a show called Macabre Theater, and we do a ghost uh, hunting se segment. That's how I actually met her. But she's also very much in the internet business and made a lot of money working software. So she's not just a oh, ghost boy. hunter. Oh, boy, what? You don't I, believe that? I would challenge that. He convinced <laughs> me that he could do better. Oh, and, and he, well, Mickey convinced you. He, he, could Mickey do convinced me that this would be a good move, a wise move, a prudent move, and, um, and I went for it. And the fact was, I did, and when I had a chance to bring in people, I did. I brought my, I brought my sister in, for gosh sakes. And she charged $3,000? And, she, and, he, and he, you know, she, she, she paid a legitimate situation. Her, she has a very unique company. And then she is friends with David Hasselhoff. And I said this to Mickey. I said, if you do my sister right, You charge David will, Hasselhoff? Yes. She will lead you down to other celebrities, if that's the direction you want to go. And, 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 I, and it would have continued to be so. When I wanted my website back, he basically you know, said some nasty things. And what did he say? I did say something nasty. He said some nasty things, and he still hasn't, regarding my girlfriend, it has nothing to do with that. But anyway, he never apologized, and we You stopped. don't like his girlfriend? That's not true either. You don't I like his girlfriend? I did apologize. You apologize, yeah. but you don't like his girlfriend? You never apologized. You never apologized for that. If you had, we probably wouldn't be here. So, um, so that's where we're at. And, and as far as damages, be perfectly honest with you. You didn't answer he had, about he the girlfriend. Did you apologize? Did you like her, I mean? Do you like her? I... I did like her up to a certain point, and then... Up to what point? Up to the point where I felt that she was uh, overstepping her bounds and misadvising Butch and, you know, putting me in a She's bad light. She's the girlfriend. Yeah, and the think. author. And the author of the book. And the author of the book. What did she want from you that bothered you so bad? Well, it's nothing that... What she, she asked for something, but that's not what put... That's not what What did had, she ask for? She asked for all of the emails that I have been compiling, meaning the email addresses, not the emails themselves, but the email addresses that I have been compiling for four and a half years so that she could send out a mailer for Butch's book telling people to sell the book. Perfect. This is what you guys were waiting for. What's your girlfriend's name? Uh, <laughs> Helen. Helen. Did Helen say, hey, Mickey, can you send out these emails? No, actually, she didn't offer that to me. That point, I offered her the, the services was, without fee. Don't you, or your, just don't you or your expert of girlfriend ever call me again? You hung up, and that was the last time we spoke. Let me. Did you say not, that, John? 
I, I didn't hear what he said. I'm sorry. I said, don't I you or your expletive girlfriend ever call me again, and you hung up. That's that, incorrect. That's bleep girlfriend. No, I, I called her a bleep. Okay, but I didn't say don't ever call him again. In fact, I've called no, him. That's, now you're, I've now called you him. You swore to tell the truth, Mickey. I did call you several times. I admitted all along that I called her a name. No, no, you said never call me again. Don't you or your girlfriend ever call me again. That no. was your exact statement. I don't believe that. Why did you not give Helen these email addresses? Okay. Because it's Butch's property. First off, when she asked and we had that exchange and I said something and we hung up. We, Butch and I did Why'd you get mad in the first place? I mentioned that because she was basically trying to force me to give her a list. So she wanted the actual email addresses only, not the emails. That requires a huge amount of work. It means you have to physically go in and take each email out and then compile them. Have a say, Helen, come over. You can, I'll, I'll, you can look at them and you. I was going to give her. The, I whatever. said to her, listen. Here's what I have. I have all of the emails. In fact, I have all the emails with me because I would be more than happy to give them to Butch. But they needed to be extracted out. Okay, worthless. I get it. So and, I made a business decision for Butch I, to say, just slow down and let me educate you about it. If she wants the email addresses, ultimately she wants to ruin Did he ever educate them. you about it? No. No, we didn't, we didn't get Were that you given far. the choice? We didn't get that far. My publisher is a pretty sharp guy, too, and this is a, you may have a letter from I him. I have a letter from the publisher, regarding, yes. Pardon me. Regarding why we wanted to do this, it wasn't anything really personal. It was a business move, but Mickey and I were having trouble getting along in the business world. So the publisher asked for the website back. Do you remember that? No. On the third week of June 2007, I was involved in several conversations with Butch Patrick and Helen Darris, both clients of the company. Uh, uh, and they basically saying that they tried to get the name from you many times or access to the uh, to the website. I I'm going to ask Butch, Butch right and here. Helen did. Butch and Helen did. Well, I can only say this: if if Butch how many times did you, uh, the Butch, Butch and just Helen said I never spoke with him again since that day, and now there's there's testimony here or there's letters stating that I spoke with him several times. So, which one is no, it? No, I'm no, not no, really no. Sure. All this letter says is that they asked you numerous times to access to the website, and you didn't give it to them. When I had the conversation it, with Butch. It, other than the emails that she she asked for the emails, she, I had her and I had a, it says in the statement you know we we kind of ended in a huff. I have all those emails, every one from the day that I took the site I have and he can have. He asked for them. You didn't give it to them. I didn't give it to him yet. <laughs> <laughs> what but I mean, they're not yours to hold. Uh, I'm I'm. At, should I have to give him that for free of all the work that I've done? If he wants to screw me out of the potential for selling his book and helping him market it, that's fine. However, for the services that I've rendered from... from that's a bad choice of words, Mickey. That's well, not the case, and you know it. You know, no one's trying to take anything away from you. There's been a bad choice of words do you, do you all think, Do you think that Mickey feels rejected by you because after all this time that you didn't it's ask him to do like all that stuff? It's almost like you think he's my girlfriend for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> In Christina's court... TV's Eddie Munster fighting for his Munster's website, hijacked by a friend. Why soon now, after all these years? Quite frankly, I thought I, I, I would have been simple. I thought that when the time came for Butch, like I said all along, if someone came along and said, Butch, you know, we want to put $50,000 into Munster's.com, or someone comes along with money or an opportunity, that Butch pays me, and he said this all along, and, and if he denies it here in court, that would surprise me that if the time came that it was going to get paid, I would be paid and we would move on. So when he asked for his things back, it would have been nice if he said, Mickey, here's, you know, here's what's fair. I'm getting $10,000. i am getting $30,000 on a book advance. I'm getting something like this. So it's about the book. I believe it's about the book and it's about the, the woman on the back of the book. I've never seen the book, ma'am, until this day. Well, you, As we stand here right here, now, I've this, never seen the book. Would you like to see it? It's, this is for you, by the way. Oh, thank you. Do you sign it? I'll get one for you, too. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Gonna... Before, after, before, after. <laughs> so it's about the book. You're suing for five thousand uh, dollars, or your domain back. Yeah, just well, basically it was for lost revenues, and the, the hundred autographed books would be five thousand dollars. It would have been so. Halloween right? appearances, I can sometimes get generate that kind of money, mm -hmm. and over a period of all these years, I'm sure a few appearances fell through the cracks. Okay, so this is what I think. Do you want me to tell you what this is about? What I think this is about? Absolutely. I think that this is about, it's like, you know when you're, when you're kids and there's always like the, the cool kid on the block and you always want to be that person's friend because they're the cool kid on the block and you'll do anything to be their friend? It's like your first crush. You'll do anything for that person. It's about the fact that this is Eddie Munster. I have a crush on Eddie? Yeah. 
You know something? It's, I mean, not, not to be no, flippant about it. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, Mickey had a very good idea about a thing called Uncle Talent, which was going to be an internet talent search situation. And I agreed to be part of that. I, I think, but see, that's what I'm saying. I think this is about seeing you and the celebrity status that you have and the business opportunities that could come from this. Mm -hmm. uh, so for him, it was looking at those business opportunities. I'm actually working with a celebrity. Th I, th we're going to make it rich. And, and we're going to be partners in these business opportunities. I'm going to be Eddie Munster's partner in all these things. I, th I think that's accurate. And when you said no to him, that was rejection. And when you're rejected, you do a lot of crazy things. A lot of crazy things. Because you, what I do have faith in, Mickey, is that you are a professional in this business. You know what you're talking about. So what we'll do, to be fair, is that we will do the hosting fee of the $1,400. I think that that's fair to him. Now, your claim, I understand why you're doing this, but I'm going to have to I have to deny that based on the fact that it's too tenuous. The book is coming out. Mm -hmm. I, you, 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 you fixed your remedies. You mitigated your damages by going somewhere else and starting a new website. Yep. You should have never had to do that, mm -hmm. but you did. As part of this order, Mickey, you have to sign over all rights to the domain name, monsters.com. So for you, and I know you know that for you to hold this registration, this domain name under your name, under your company name, that's not right. You know that. So we're going to make sure that the check that he's going to give you, he won't give it to you until you release complete rights and privileges to his yes, domain name. That's all I asked for. Okay. That's what we're doing. So you won't get your money until you release all rights and privileges, and we're going to make sure of that. Don't know if you can salvage the friendship. That's up to you guys. Thank you, Your Honor. Good luck. All right. Judge Christina has ruled in favor of the plaintiff and ordered the defendant to pay $1,400. She has ordered the plaintiff to return the rights to the website and has denied the counterclaim. Mickey had a dual role. He was Eddie Munster's biggest fan, and he was going to ride the Eddie wave all the way to the bank. Meanwhile, he had to protect the Eddie website until the big payday arrived. He knew Eddie wasn't computer literate, so until payday came, he had to save Eddie from himself. But Eddie got a girlfriend, and he didn't need saving. See you in court. If you'd like to contact Christina's court, call toll-free 1-800-901-7039 or log on to christinascourt.com.